This is a part of history and I'm so excited to be here. So you basically need to be a CrossFit athlete to walk up these fucking stairs. But I'm doing it in a dress. I don't recommend this. Welcome to Mexico City. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the best neighborhoods, food, and at the very end, I'll share with you my best tips for safety, transport, and so much more. Hi guys, it is Vanessa from Wander Awkwards, and today we're in Mexico City. We're gonna be featuring the best places to eat, the most incredible Instagrammable places, and a part of Mexico City you've never heard of. We are hosted by Punto MX. Welcome to Mexico City. With nearly 22 million people in Mexico City, there's an undeniable energy that you have to experience for yourself. As the cultural renaissance capital of Mexico, Ciudad de México, or CDMX, is filled with incredible food, lively culture, and rich history for all to enjoy. Welcome, we're at La Gruta, an amazing restaurant inside of a cave. So definitely get a reservation for this because it's impossible to walk through the door. I booked this table three weeks in advance and I still had to call and confirm. But I bet it'll be amazing. As a second generation Mexican American, this was a particularly special experience for me as I got to explore my heritage on my terms. If you want to be in the mix of it all, definitely stay in the historic center of CDMX. This will give you walkable access to the most famous historical buildings, loads of plazas, and tons of amazing food. If you want to be somewhere a bit more trendy, Condesa is where all the cool kids are. With almond milk lattes and vegan eateries, Condesa is an affluent foodie neighborhood where the elegant can brunch in peace. Home to the Frida Kahlo Museum, Coyoacan is a hidden cultural gem. The little neighborhood is super colorful, there are loads of amazing local restaurants, and this is where you see normal families living normal lives. Did I mention there's no bad food in Mexico City? From the littlest street vendor to some of the most incredible high-end restaurants, your soul and stomach will be thanking you for making it down south to Mexico. For this taco, I would strongly suggest a little bit of this uh, Mexican salsa diced onions with um, tomatoes and chile. More or less. The gallo is not as watery. This is called chamoy. It's a concoction of uh, peaches and uh, plums with cheese olive. So you have to understand. Whenever we have migrants from other countries, we take their ingredients and start like figuring out what we can do. So this is what we come up with the cheese olive. Your taco is going to be shoulder meat and pork belly. So it's going to be the perfect combination between meat and fattiness. Saving grace. Uh, this is sort of a treat for young uh, children. They trick them into eating uh, fibrous vegetables by putting uh, like sugar and um, chili flakes on it. And there's a variety of different flavors and options, but um, it actually stays on it because there's a sweet sort of plum taste. And eat your children's vegetables. <laughs> eat your vegetables, children. and you don't get one of these, you never came to the market because oh. it's such a thing to do. So you're getting a tostada covered with cream and cheese. It's not creme fraiche, it's not sour cream, it's Mexican cream. Okay. It's going to be delicious. 
If you're enjoying this video, hit that like button and subscribe. And in the past, when the Aztecs would sacrifice people, they would actually push them from the very top of the pyramid so they would fall all the way down to their death. And that was actually a decent way to die. If you were being sacrificed as a warrior, you would actually be dismembered limb from limb. And then the royal family would cook and eat you as a signal to the gods for their appreciation. So let's talk about transport in Mexico. There's a variety of ways to get around. Uh, the people need a cheap and easy way to get around the city. Uh, and apparently, most people commute over two hours going one way. So you know that this transportation system is quite robust. However, it is very crowded, it's very noisy, it's really, really warm. So another alternative is to take Uber or to have your hotel organize a cab for you. Now, in our circumstance, when we landed, we actually arranged for a transfer, and this cost us about 30 bucks. It was about a 30 minute journey, mostly because of traffic, and the guy was great, spoke a little bit of English, and overall, we had a wonderful experience with him. At a later point in time, we wanted to go to the Aztec ruins, and we were reading that it was quite difficult to go via this bus, and then we weren't really looking for a full tour, so we decided to organize a car for about half a day, uh, roughly around five hours, and in total, this cost us 1,500 pesos, or about 75 American dollars. Uh, we actually found some of our friends at the Aztec ruins and they were stranded because they took Uber over there and had no way to get back. So fortunately we came to the rescue and invited them to share our cab and everything worked out beautifully because they ended up joining us for lunch which was an amazing experience. Your second option is Uber. Now Uber is super easy and convenient, you use it just like the app at home. And this really takes out a lot of the hassle because you don't have to negotiate for Uber. It's a set price that you get to see and you get to know uh, information about your driver and the car via the app. One scam I wanted to warn you about was when you're getting dropped off by your Uber. Be sure to always ask them to help you with your bags uh, in the back because then they can't drive away with your stuff when you get out. This happened to a friend of a friend and so we were always very conscientious to ask him for help. Uh, Mexican culture is very hospitable, so most people will not have an issue with it. Uh, if they do, that's definitely a red flag. But like I said with my fanny pack, most of my valuables are attached to me, so uh, the whole being robbed thing wasn't too big of a threat to me. Uh, but stay safe out there, kids, and use Uber and organize your cab with your hotel. Another super fashionable option for properly secured documents and items is the very fashionable Fanny pack. So sexy. In reality, I think this is the best thing since sliced gluten bread, uh, or sorry, gluten free bread, because I can keep everything super close to me and it's easily accessible. Now, when I'm going through the Mercados, I typically only take this so I can immediately grab my phone, my wallet, my um, personal items, and this just gives me the peace of mind that I'm quite close and aware of everything that is important to me at all times. I actually sleep with this on planes uh, and long haul flights or any sort of long haul transportation because at the end of the day, all I really need is my passport and my cards. Everything else is disposable. And with a fanny pack, as fashionable as it may seem, I have that peace of mind. Now lastly, let's talk about getting around Mexico City by foot. So Mexico City is huge. There are millions of people that call this place home, so it's going to be a little bit hectic when you're navigating the city, especially the uh, historical center by foot. I think the best policy is to stick to the main roads where there's lots of people, lots of faces, and try to avoid the smaller uh, streets and calles and neighborhoods during the dark because it does get a little bit dodgy and people get a little bit more uh, upfront with you as people start drinking and enjoying their evening. I think if you stay on foot in uh, the historical center, it's super easy to find enough restaurants, to find enough bars and clubs, so really you don't have to worry that much about anything.
Thanks for watching! If you liked that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get notified about new videos every week.